This is LA's Live from Los Angeles, welcome to the Dr. Aaron Show. We're all about manifestation, transformation, and breakthroughs. It's time to claim your birthright of prosperity, vitality, and love. So grab your tea or coffee because together we're awakening the world. May you live your truth. Live from Los Angeles, we come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principle, and align with universal law. We also come together in community, in society, in New Thought Global. We truly believe that when somebody awakens, they have a gift and message to bring to the world. And together, we are awakening the world. We're all about empowerment, enlightenment, and entrepreneurship. Because we know that truth needs to go out to the world, and we claim our birthright of prosperity. So today, I want to talk to you about emotional mastery. This is different than EQ, emotional intelligence in psychology. This is coming from a metaphysical standpoint. So I will never forget um, when I was back in the day, an emotional disaster. (laughs) Let's just get it straight. Um, I would be up and down. I would blame, shame, and play the guilt game. I would only do things when I felt like it. So as another emotions ran my life. I was the effect of my emotions. And I hit my low. Um, Most of you guys know my story. I was very codependent and ended up being in a very dysfunctional relationship with um, someone of a famous Grammy winning musician. And I am so thankful for him today. I am so grateful for the universe sending me the perfect masterclass to develop myself, to um, get to the place where I was able to understand that I needed to master my emotions. So what happened in that relationship and that masterclass was I was an emotional disaster. Um, what was happening in that relationship was, you know, lies, cheating, all kinds of stuff, falling off the wagon, all kinds of things. And I was pointing my finger. I'm the victim of this addict. I'm the victim of this narcissist. I'm the victim of all this stuff. And I had a great teacher that was brought to me, as you guys know as well. He was um, an, like a grandfather to me, a metaphysician, and would teach me universal laws. And we'd have these deep amazing, profound conversations and channel and do all kinds of amazing things. And I came to realize what it meant to master my emotions. So first we have to understand how emotions are created. And it's very simple. We are meaning making machines. So the moment that we place a positive or negative meaning on something, we instantaneously have a positive or negative emotion. We recognize that beliefs equal feelings, sorry, emotions equals thoughts equals feelings equal emotions equals the circumstances of our life. I'll say that again. Beliefs equal thoughts Thoughts equal feeling, feelings equal emotions, emotions equal the circumstances of our lives. So we place meaning on things contingent upon what we truly, what our programming, our beliefs, what we believe, what is good or bad, right? So emotions are the effect of our beliefs. So what was happening over and over in that relationship is I would you know, put the meaning that cheating is bad and awful. And instantaneously, I would have these huge emotions, right? So this isn't about like trying to master my emotions. You know, it wasn't about me mastering that my emotions, so I would be emotionless and be okay with somebody cheating. But it was first recognizing that I needed to take responsibility. Because whether I was going to be able to stay in that relationship or whether I was going to be able to get out of that relationship or whatever. The point is, is that I had to find peace. I was literally killing myself with my negative emotions. I was ruining my life. And I had to take 100% responsibility around my emotions. And so as I work with, you know, thousands of entrepreneurs and all types of people, I do have some high-end one-on-ones which I rarely take anymore. Um, but it is it is the primary work 
that we do is to release the limited beliefs, release that trauma, and also take responsibility for their lives, which means they have to really recognize the cause of their emotions. You are not your emotions. You are the creator of your emotions. You can never be the effect of your emotions. You can pretend like you're the effect, pretending to be the victim of the narcissist, pretending to be all these things. But the reality is that you're not just the individual. You are the collective and you are the cosmic. You created the entire universe, and that is the truth. So today, I invite us to take a look at what it means to take responsibility around your emotions. Whether you are having stress because of what's going on in the world, whether you are in a dysfunctional relationship, whether you are frustrated because you can't get your business to launch at the level you want it to get to launch to, or whether you're in apathy and you just really are hopeless and maybe you even have thoughts of, you know, why are we even, what's the point of life? So I want to first disclose that if you are having really intense emotions, I would advise you to seek professional help, okay? Because sometimes we go so far down the track of creating emotions that they are habits and deeply ingrained through trauma and through all kinds of things. And so this is not about trauma right now. This is about a kind of surface level of emotions and being able to recognize how you are the creator of your emotions, okay? So let's get this straight. So emotional intelligence, I think the first part is to really decide and really wake up as we, as I teach in the Awakening book, is the step one is to wake up and to decide and realize what your what emotions you're having in your life and taking responsibility for them. So an example would be, I'm somebody who is experiencing the emotion of feeling frustrated. I'm somebody who's experiencing the emotion of fear of what's happening in the world. I'm somebody who is uh, experiencing the emotion of apathy, right? I believe that nothing matters anymore. I'm hopeless, right? I am somebody who is experiencing the emotion of being pissed off, okay? So then we back it up. So where well, let's break down each emotion and kind of look at how is this created, right? So emotions are the expression of our value system being met or not met, right? And our value system is based off of our beliefs, what we believe in the programming of what's right and wrong and what we value. So emotions are the expressions of our value system being met or not met. So for me in that relationship, my values were not being met. What I thought and what I needed was not being met. So of course I would be emotional, right? We call it living our truth. Are you living your truth or not living your truth? And if you're not living your truth, then you're going to get emotional in a negative way. And if you are living your truth, you're going to get emotional in a beautiful, enjoyful way, right? So emotions are the expressions of our value system being met or not met. Emotions are the effect of us believing that something we value is arriving, departing, or present. You guys get that? So what happens is you put a meaning on what does or does not happen, and then you experience that emotion. And oftentimes we look to the world like, this caused my emotion. This person caused my emotion. The pandemic caused my emotion. The loss of my career caused my emotion. But the reality is that it's not the truth. The truth is that it's the meaning that you put around whatever happened or did not happen and then you are the effect of that emotion. There's people that would lose their job that would be like, oh my gosh, this is so great because I hated that job anyway. And now it's going to demand me to, to pivot and to innovate and create something new, right? They might have an amazing emotion. Two people could have lose their job and one person could have total devastation, apathy, grief, fear, um, sadness, all the above. The next person could have that exact same thing and lose their job and they could be thrilled and excited and and motivated and all the above, right? So it really comes down to your value system, your perception, which comes down to your beliefs, comes down to your beliefs, okay? Who do you be and what do you live? What's your identity? Those are your beliefs, okay? So emotions. So let's break this down. So let's look. take a look at fear. Fear is the emotion it's the belief, sorry, the emotion of fear is the belief that something we value might go away, 
we fear, right? It's like the unknown. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? My, maybe the future is going away for the country. The, the future of my job might be going away, uh, whatever it is, right? So the emotion of fear is the belief that something we value might go away. Grief, what is grief? The emotion of grief is the belief that something, something we value is gone. I'm grieving that relationship that went away. I'm grieving my grandmother that passed away. I'm grieving the old days where we could go out and go anywhere without masks on, right? Grieving. Apathy. What is apathy? The emotion of apathy is a belief that nothing is valuable. What does it matter anyway? You kick the can. I'm just... I don't even, it doesn't matter anyway. I can't create what I want anyway. So it's just, there's no point. Totally apathetic, right? The emotion of apathy is a belief that nothing is valuable. Frustration. What is frustration? The emotion of frustration is the belief that someone or something is getting in the way of what we value. Oh, I'm so mad right now. This internet thing, I want, I'm trying to get this done and it's so hard, right? That's frustration. The emotion of frustration is the belief that someone or something is getting in the way of what we value. So again, we have to recognize that you're not your emotions, you're the creator of them. Emotions are the effect of the meaning we place on people, places, and things. Emotions are the effect of what we think should or should not happen based on our value system. So I invite you. I invite you to begin to just become aware, right? So the first step in awakening is waking up. It's becoming aware. It's, it's, it's deciding that you are going to take responsibility for your emotions. Okay. Step number two is, is deprogramming. It's, it's reprogramming your subconscious mind, right? So you can take a look at your emotions and say, am I having emotions because I'm actually really not living my truth and my emotions are working for me? to propel me and realign me to my truth? Or are these emotions coming from past trauma and limited beliefs that no longer serve me, okay? So we wanna actually reprogram and deprogram from all the limited beliefs and trauma, okay? That's step number two. Step number three is aligning, right? So again, that's that second part of my emotions are telling me I'm off course for my truth. This jackass is no longer in alignment with me, right? Like I got to get straight and get on my my truth and and release this this emotional masterclass if you will, okay? And then number 4 is really to to practice to affirm, to affirm every single day and live, you know, in the emotions that you choose to live. Every day, my par, like the bottom line for me and my emotions is peace. That is my must have of my life. If I can't live in peace, then I don't even understand universal law because we recognize if we're in grief and fear and frustration and pissed offness and all that, I'm going to inform my subconscious mind and universal mind and I'm going to get more negativity in my life. It is law. So for me, emotional intelligence is is recognizing that I have to be responsible for my emotions. No one else can make me happy and no one else can make me sad. It's impossible. And in fact, the moment that you assign somebody as your source of joy, your source of happiness, you instantaneously assign them as your source of suffering. You can't have one without the other. And that's why we practice that we do not place our power out into the world or in with somebody else. My source of everything is is within divine it's within that one source that lives and breathes as me my higher self okay and when my emotions are based on that then i get freedom because i get to generate my emotions i get to generate my bliss i get to generate joy i get to generate creativity i get to generate fulfillment i get to generate all those emotions that i do choose to to embody which is ecstasy pleasure, joy, happiness, love, light, all the above. But guess what? I don't ever want the emotions to go away, the negative ones, because they are actually what tell me when I'm not on course. They tell me when I'm not living my truth. So I don't, it's not about getting rid of the negative emotions, about using the negative emotions. 
to align to my value system that matters to me. And until we're able to witness another human being without judgment, we will never be able to see anyone, right? So being able to witness our emotions as well without judgment, but recognizing they're working for us and not against us. This is emotional mastery. This is emotional mastery. So if you're with somebody that is pointing the finger at you, no matter how much you tell them and try and have them see your viewpoint, it's never going to work because they haven't, they haven't done their inner work. They haven't woke up and they're going to forever be the effect of whatever's going on like I was. And I take full responsibility. And so in that, I recognize if you're somebody that is looking to the world and, and creating yourself the victim and your emotions are caused by something out in the world, then that means you've not, this is your work. It's time to wake up. It's time to take emotional, you know, do your emotional work and take responsibility for your emotions. You are responsible for your peace. You're responsible for your happiness. And I remember getting to that place and saying it to, in that relationship, saying, you are no longer the source. You are no longer my source. And I release you to the universe. And I'm so grateful for all the lessons that you've taught me. And I will forever love you, but I cannot be in relationship with you at this level. And I started loving myself and taking responsibility for my emotions. And now I no longer am afraid. I'm no longer afraid of, of what it means to be in relationship because I know that if any emotions come up, then it's, my, it's a classroom to grow still and see what my values are or what still needs to be you know, released from my soul. So as you go into today, I invite you to take a journal of the emotions that you have, that you're creating and, and what meaning you're putting around things and begin to decide what emotions you're really committed to and what you need to get there. What mindset and skill set, what inner work, what trauma work, what spiritual awakening you need to do in order to, to align to the emotions that you want to experience in this life. Okay, so emotional mastery, it is incredible journey, incredible classroom, incredible practice. So practice observing your emotions today, a practice observing I'm somebody who likes it when somebody shows up. I'm somebody who doesn't like it when somebody doesn't communicate. I'm somebody that likes, you know, that gets pissed off and fearful when I watch news. Hmm. I'm somebody who does better when I meditate and listen to, you know, mantras, uh, and so on and so forth. So begin to witness your emotions, begin to witness them and get clear of what, what you're, how you're creating them and what you can do to create new ones that you want to experience. Okay. So remember that you're not your emotions. You are the creator of them. You are not your beliefs. You are the creator of your beliefs. You are a divine spiritual being creating exponentially 24 seven. And you can create any life that you want. Have a beautiful day and may you live your truth. Thank you for tuning in Soul Society and Dr. Aaron Podcast. If you've had a calling to be a spiritual leader or coach, you can go to soulsociety.com and check out our free training. If you've received value here, I would love it if you take a moment and give a five-star review. In exchange, I have a ton of free gifts for you. Grab your free awakening book, 40 guided meditations, and digital manifesting masterclass. I also have a free money meditation and worksheet for you so you can begin to break through your scarcity mindset and claim your birthright of prosperity. You can get all of your gifts and learn about our upcoming transformational events in my bio link in both Instagram and Facebook. That's under drerin.tv, which is D-R-E-R-I-N.tv. Also, I'd love to invite you into our free private community on Facebook under groups called Soul Society. That is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Soul Society. That's S-O-U-L-C-I-E-T-E. Have a divine day and may you live your truth.